Hello my friends, I'm Danielle Hogan. This is Hogan Life. Welcome to my channel. And here we like to talk about everything mom related. I myself am a mother of seven. Right now I wanna to come to you and talk to you about maximizing learning around the holidays. Now this is homeschool, but it's also just like mom life ideas. For getting through this next couple of months and actually enjoying it and feel satisfied at the end that your kids really got a lot from it without extra prep time or book work or extra curriculum. I think we can all agree the last couple months of the year are some of the busiest months ever. Now before I go into these nine or ten ideas, I want you to answer this one question. What do I want the one big takeaway from this season to be for my kids? And I can tell you what my desire is for my own kids. We could just share with them about the gift that makes all other giving possible, and that is the gift of Jesus coming down to earth as a baby. So in light of this time when we are celebrating this amazing gift that makes peace in our lives possible, which as a mom, hello, super thankful for peace. And then being able to teach our children that out of his gift, we are able to bring a gift of ourselves to the world. One, okay, ideas for maximizing your learning this season. I would include beginning in November or any time in December, read aloud about Christmas throughout the world, how people celebrate Christmas in different countries. You can talk about traditions. You can, if you wanna get really crazy, make some meals that are traditions of other countries during this time. Two, and this is a must for our family, and I strongly urge you, read The Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Now, I've read this so many times, but five or so years ago, I started reading it to my kids every Christmas season. Marley was dead to begin with. <laughs> and I get it, it's Dickens. It's, a, it's not an easy read. But the wisdom of our ancestors is in the simile, and my unhallowed hands shall not disturb it or the country's done for. You will therefore permit me to repeat emphatically that Marley was dead as a... After we read the story and we watch The Christmas Carol with George C. Scott, the kids are like, oh, yeah, that's the book we just read. And even my young kids are engaged. It is such a wonderful family event to slowly but surely go through this book. Now it's only about 100 pages, so it's not daunting like, you know, Dickens, 800 pages, like his, all his other books. But some ideas, you can read it around the dinner table, maybe five or 10 minutes every night. Our favorite place is to read it around the fireplace. You can incorporate it into your school routine if you do a basket time or if you do morning read aloud. You can also read it in the pitch black by the fire with a flashlight. <laughs> read it, you won't regret it. Three, something we love to do as a family, and our church has done this the last few years, the Children's Christmas Box. Now this is a worldwide organization, so you can look it up and see how this ministry has impacted so many kids around the world. And I love to play a minute or two video for my kids, just allow them to see that, you know, we are so privileged in America. We are so blessed. We've been given so much. And out of that, instead of being entitled, instead of feeling like we don't have enough, we need to look at the people who have less than us and we need to think about what can we do to make their Christmas special. I think it is one of our great challenges as parents in this day and age in this culture to teach our children to love to give, not just think about the gifts that they're gonna get over Christmas. So what you do is you get one of these shoe boxes and if you find a ministry or a church or a charitable organization that is doing this, you can get the shoe box from them and it'll give you instructions and you fill it up, you just jam pack it. It gives you ideas for, for wow gifts and, and gifts that children will need and you get to pick an age group and whether it's a boy or a girl, and then you send it to the ministry and they ship it all to all these children around the world. Number four, thinking about Thanksgiving. In America, we usually get together as a family and we eat a big meal and we have all the traditional items. We have the turkey and the gravy and the stuffing and the cranberry sauce. And we go around the room and say what we're thankful for. Now, during the month of November, why not start around the breakfast table or the dinner table, just going around the table and saying what you're thankful for as a family? That habit of thanksgiving, that habit of being thankful, it requires practice or it does not become a habit. And it's really easy to be actually dissatisfied with the things that you don't have instead of thankful for the things that you do have. And next, and we're still talking about Thanksgiving, there are people in America and in our town that perhaps don't have enough money to buy a Thanksgiving meal. If you are part of a church or a ministry that collects the various foods and gives families a Thanksgiving box, that has all the fixings for a great Thanksgiving dinner. Participate with them, buy a couple of extra cans, buy a couple extra boxes of stuffing, and donate it to a ministry that gives a Thanksgiving dinner to a family that perhaps wouldn't have one otherwise. Next, cultivate as a family an attitude of enjoyment around this time. Now, attitude is everything. Myself as a mom, if I am going around the house being stressed, 
being snippy and short with my kids and my husband because I have a lot on my plate like that justifies it. So get together with your family and say, you know, this Christmas, we are going to present an attitude of peace, an attitude of enjoyment, an attitude of gratitude as a gift to each other. You know, do all the things around Christmas, everything your heart desires, buy the presents, put up the lights, get a beautiful Christmas tree, make the cookies, and don't worry about Christmas being too commercialized. Remember, Christmas being commercialized is of the heart. So as long as your heart is not commercializing Christmas, then you're fine. All right, with your kids. Next, homemade presents. I know that kids like to buy things for their friends or their cousins or each other. And I love to help facilitate that. However, I'm not gonna spend a bunch of extra money on Amazon. It is easy to press a button and have Amazon ship something to your door. But what is less easy and what requires some planning, some time, some sacrifice is making something for someone you care about. So what we do have to do as moms is have those activities available. This is an idea I have for this year. I don't know if you can relate with me, but I've got lots of these little guys, Legos. We've been collecting Legos for quite a lot of years. So I am encouraging my younger kids to make a creation out of Legos that they can give to their little cousins or their siblings, something special that they have made themselves. If you have watched the Lego movie, then you know there's something special about being a master builder. It means you don't need the instructions. You can build something from your imagination. So that's something new we're doing this year, but we also have in the past done pot holders. I'm going to make those things available to my kids this year as well so they can start planning. Who do I wanna buy presents for or, or make presents for? And then what do I want to make them? We also do ornaments, necklaces, you can make cards. How about writing a poem? That would be a great and fun assignment on a random Tuesday during your school routine is let's write a Christmas poem for someone we love. Next, create your Christmas movie list. And I'm not just talking about every Christmas movie that has ever been. Christmas movies that are meaningful. We love The Christmas Carol, we love It's a Wonderful Life, and it is a little serious. I'd rather they watch real life, slow moving, black and white movies that have a little bit of sorrow than fast moving, colorful nonsense. But at least pick one, one meaningful movie that you watch with the whole family. Make your hot apple cider, pop your popcorn, and share something together. Next, memorize the Christmas story. This is something we do every year, so obviously because we've memorized it in the past, it's easy to pick up again and, and it's easy to rememorize it. And I just do this during our basket time, probably about midway through November, I just start reading the Christmas story to them every Glory morning. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. Kids are able to memorize so much just by that simple repetition every morning. Lastly, I like to encourage my kids to give away their toys. To not just give away the things that don't matter to them anymore, but to give away something that is special to them. And I don't make them do it, but I don't stop them from giving something away even if it's perhaps one of their nicer toys. We learn early to not value things above people. You will be more successful and happier if you've developed those natural giving responses. So the Christmas season can be so abundantly joyful, so filled with family time and special instances, moments and memories. And all the while, through it all, we can teach our kids the value of giving. I'm always looking for more ideas. So please, in the comments, share with me what you do in your school or maybe just in your everyday habits to prepare for and to enjoy the upcoming holidays. Danielle Hogan signing off. I'll see you next time. Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about.